I'm intrigued to see how different our stories are. Where did your career start? I've been playing Pouchy football for about 22 years now. Um, back in the day, it was fairly new to England, so we had to drive the sport to be to a level it's now. From there till now, it was a lot of hard work, but yeah. we're slowly getting to being at a level that we're happy with, um, where it's well known, and uh, obviously with England now involved, it's uh, getting to a very good, good level that we like and enjoy. Yeah, no, nice. What about yours? Pretty similar, actually, in terms of the way you spoke about needing to drive your sport to get it to where it needs to be. Um, I think that's similar for us in, in the women's game in terms of getting the publicity that we've been fighting for for such a long time and people to know that we actually, the sport exists and we exist yeah. like women in sport. And I really think we're at a, a really good stage now where the game is huge and we're just putting it in a better place for the next generation. Talk about your Euro winning journey. For me, looking back, the the things that stand out the most is how close we were as a group. Yeah. If there was like a bad day or something or nothing ever affected us and mm. we really looked after one another on and off the pitch, that then reflected in the moments where we go one nil down or we concede and you know, how do you bounce back? That's They can yeah. be pivotal points in, in the game and in the tournament. So yeah, I'd say the key things were mentality, the togetherness and literally just having the summer of, of your life really. Mine was kind of the same, like obviously we went into the tournament as kind of joint favourites with the world champions France. Yeah. We had them in the group stages and we lost in the group stage, I think 3-0 it was. And so it could knock your confidence. Yeah. But as a team, we stuck together. Thankfully, we got to the final and we were 2-0 down against them in the final. And while there's still time on the clock, you still know you can get goals back. And so we went into the second half, I think there was like 10 minutes left. We were 2-0 down and we managed to pull it back to 2-2 and went to extra time and then we won on penalties. We play a different style of football to quite a lot of the other teams. We, we play with like a four, because it's only four aside. We play with our keeper involved in the play quite a lot, yeah. so it's kind of a passing game. Um, most of the other countries play with like a static goalkeeper and three players outfield. And we've always said that if we stick to our principles and play in that way, not changing the way we play regardless of the score, yeah. we'll get the right result in the end. And yeah, obviously the end result was winning the Euro. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's, we said to ourselves that's what we do and we stuck mm -hmm. to it and obviously it paid off in the end. Just the elation from obviously the players and the fans, especially for the parents and stuff, because for us, our parents are vital because we can't get to half the places we can yeah. without our parents and carers. And just to see them know that all the pain that we've suffered in the finals previously, the joy that it brings to them just for yeah. us winning as well as us enjoying it. Obviously, it's not on the 90,000 scale fans that you've got, but uh, hopefully one day we'll get yeah, to, it will be. to a it will be. large amount of fans. <laughs> How do you guys like stop that? players going off and thinking, oh, I, I should be on the pitch instead of her or yeah. etc. How do you stop that? Yeah, it's extremely hard. It's, um, I think for me that came from kind of Serena and just the way the, the group was really and what environment we wanted to create as a mm. team. No matter whether you play every single game or one minute or no minutes, you've played a vital role in us succeeding mm. and it really wasn't just about the players on the pitch, it was about the whole collective. Mm. That's always um, a part of our values really is the team comes first and how are you going to contribute to the team's success? You know, that open communication with the manager and yeah. um, the environment that we created oh, was really nice. special. What was the story of the final? It was going back to the drawing board and see what we could do different, because obviously the game plan going into the France game originally didn't work. We knew that their passing wasn't as accurate as us, so we kind of, in the final, played on the counter-attack more. So they scored two goals, but then we hit them yeah. twice on the counter-attack and pulled two goals back. And then again, this extra time, it was fairly even. And then, yeah, penalties, it was down to uh, four of us and um, couldn't Sounds even look for the, the final pen that we took. I was looking the other way and the minute we scored, I saw my dad jump over the banister, come and give me a hug. Oh, and yeah, special it was, moment. It's very special. I lost my dad this year and it was, uh, oh, I'm sorry. that's one thing that I look back on. Like yeah. my dad's last major tournament he saw was us winning it. Yeah. And yeah, it's just something that will always be emotional for me and close to my heart, you know. Yeah, no, definitely cherish that forever. Yeah. How were you feeling before the final? Honestly, I think everyone expects us to say we were really nervous, but I think we were actually really calm. We just saw it as another, it's just another game. And you have to kind of take away what's riding on that game mm. so that you don't start going and above and beyond and doing different things. And for us, it was, this is the game plan. This is what we need to execute. These are your roles. But yeah, I think as a team, we were collectively really calm and just excited to be able to have that opportunity. Yeah. Home Euros, the final at Wembley, sellout crowd. And we knew it was um, a crucial kind of part of the women's game as well and we had the chance to, to make history and to take the women's game to another level so there was more than just winning the Euros riding on that game. Us more experienced ones we've kind of been at that level before but you've got players around you that are not as yeah. experienced and so it's just my job to keep them 
uh, calm and talk them through what could happen and just keep keep doing what we've been told. Yeah. And yeah, obviously, uh, preparation is the key. Thoughts and feelings when it was over and you'd won it? Absolute relief when that final whistle went. You know, we'd achieved so much and it had been such a long journey of kind of failing in the past that we'd we'd finally done it and I think the group had been through so much. Me and Leah actually had a conversation before the tournament and we said listen we're gonna obviously we were a new partnership in you know captain and vice captain and yeah. we just said we're gonna get the best out of one another and kind of lean on each other when when needed and we were like we're gonna give absolutely everything to this team and do our absolute best to, to help the girls win. We remember you know, having a little moment after once the final whistle went and we just said we did it like we've, we've done it and that was a really special moment that we kind of made a little pact and we stuck to it. What's next for your team? For England we've got next year World Cup in Sydney so uh, a lot of preparation towards that now. Yeah. Uh, we start our camp in March. Being Euro champions we want to go to that World yeah. Cup next year and give a good account of ourselves and hopefully bring, bring the World Cup back. As is uh, similar really obviously we've got the World Cup next year so it's all eyes on that now and, mm. and preparation begins. Yeah it's just about continuing to develop as a squad and keep pushing ourselves and be in the best place going into that tournament. Awesome. Oh, I'm sure you're smashing. Yeah, good luck to yourselves Thank as well. Thank you. Thank you.